Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back for some more EVE Online. And in today's video, I'm going to do a little bit more uh, conduit, emerging conduit running. But I want to uh, specifically test the uh, drone aggro in these conduits because um, I just did one without any problems. And I actually have suffered uh, quite a little bit in the last couple of days uh, with losing drones in these emerging conduits. And so my question is, does it have something to do with the order in which you actually use your weapons? Because that seems to be the case. So uh, on this one, we are going to go the wrong way uh, just to test it out. So let's get started. We are going to drop our mobile uh, tractor unit. And then uh, the first thing we'll do once they come out is actually target something and then drop the ogres on my primary target. So there comes the fissure. Let's uh, save a little bit more cap. I just did one. Uh, so we're gonna try and save as much cap as possible. Um, and then once they come out, let's see what we're up against. Okay, just one uh, destroyer. So that's pretty good. We're going to start to uh, increase our resistances and he's now targeted. So let's drop these ogres. And then let's go after the harrowing Rasneborg right away. They've got renewing uh, two normals and then a starving. Uh, the good news is no webs. Uh, so that should give my ogres a little bit of a chance to survive, even if they get targeted. Uh, but notice that they have quite a bit of damage already because, well, I've been struggling with, uh, with the drone aggro basically in the last couple of days. So let's get started. I think they're all firing at me at this point we've got a little bit of he war coming and the first harrowing Rasneborg ogres keep missing but at least the missiles do not and so that one should go down well once they can actually let's press F again come on guys chase down that Kikimura and get rid of it so that is done and uh, that he war is still going on me so next up let's do the normal Rasneborg Damavik. Oh, and there we go. Ewar is uh, is gone. So that means that they have switched to my drones. I oh, I look at that. First one was already in shields. Luckily, I can um, pull them back because there are no webbers here. And so let's just give it a moment. There we go. Ewar is back on me. This is actually very, very important to keep a close eye on. And let's use the small drones, which you can see even they suffer from that drone aggro. And let's get on that Rasneborg Damavik. And then see if we can uh, get rid of him this way. And yeah, keep a close eye on the E-War. Once they switch, it's just gone. That does have advantages though. Uh, oh, no, actually, I'm not going to go after the Starving first. The reason is I want to see when, he when they decide to switch targets just from this. So let's keep going. And let's get the other Rasneborg Damavik first. Uh, these without a prefix actually also like I think fire missiles or something like that that dish extra damage uh, in the kinetic form let's see if it happens Not spot there it goes and that's from the Rasneborg Damavik so it's actually pretty important if you want to lower the incoming damage to take those guys out swiftly as well like that and then next up we have the renewing fire and fire let's go but you see um, I deployed my drones first, send them out to attack, and we already have one switch um, aggressive Damavix on my ogres. Let's keep going on the renewing one. So at this point, they're not switching to my hobgoblins anymore, but this was also a pretty small wave, of course, only the first one. And then let's see if they remember that as well. Or we'll, we'll make the mistake a second time in the second wave to see if they decide to switch more often. Um, but this is actually a pretty important lesson because I had none of that when I was actually allowing my missiles to do the first few rounds of damage and uh, basically get that initial aggro. So let's keep going here. Starving Rasdenborg next shouldn't be a problem. Uh, small drones on the Damavix, it's not bad either. It's far more consistent than using the Ogres. So next up, let's do a reload here. Let's target, and this time we've got Zoria's Kikimora as primary. Oh, no, the Tangling one maybe as primary then, um, just because it's there. And if they do decide to switch, because I'm going to test this out again. So we're going to get my Ogres out. We're going to start on the Tangling. 
and send them out first and then let's see if we do get an aggro switch again on this wave pretty small only five ships but we are talking tricky kimuras now he's also in range for my missiles so engage and we've got two e war so far should still get a whip at some point but uh he's uh taking a lot of damage which is really nice and then let's keep a close eye on all of this he's still trying to get in range there goes his whip at 10 kilometers so now the e-war is on me come on guys there we go next up zoria's kikimora she will undoubtedly be doing a lot of damage and then yeah keep a very close eye on this if that goes away they're hungry for your drones so zoria's kikimora next taking a decent amount of shield damage that's gone and yeah again with the incoming kinetic um Rasnaborg and Zoria. So these two, without a prefix, dish that extra kinetic damage. Important to know. So Rasnaborg Kikimora comes in next. She drops loot, which potentially can be good. And again, we don't have a switch. That is uh, actually surprisingly nice uh, of these guys. To not want to eat up my drones. Instead, they're really focusing on my ship. But... With that incredible passive tank still 74% and holding. So it's definitely not a big deal. We'll go after the harrowing next. Because he's still target painting us. And my cap, well, it's doing okay still. And at this point for the last one. I think uh, I want to save a little bit of time. It basically brings my shields back down and gives me time for a reload as well. I basically try to make it happen so that the final wave comes in and that I'm actually uh, at full missile capabilities. Uh, I think this will be maybe like two volleys or something like that. And then we'll do the reload. So that's the first one. Second one, bringing it down quite substantially. Then we'll stop. About half armor. Uh, maybe I can do one more. Nah, it'll go down pretty quickly. Let's do a reload here. And let's see how my ogres do. What I like is sometimes you get good hits. Like 319, 320 right there. That's like the same as 3 to sometimes even 4 hobgoblin hits. Which is not bad at all. Um, and then we get that final wave. Missiles are all at the ready. Let's start targeting stuff. And of course Zoria's Vitmak is primary. She does deal a lot of damage. Let's go. Send them out first right away. I actually do this on, on most waves. Uh, because her you, you really want to dish damage to uh, to this Vitmak as quickly as possible. To lower the risk. Full E-War on me. Including uh, some Guidance Disruption. That's going to lower my DPS I think. And then press F often enough to make sure that your, your ogres keep chasing after the target. Because sometimes I do see them lag behind. So now we get full incoming DPS. And it's quite a few uh, opponents. So this is going to challenge the tank at least a little bit. And yeah, keep going after the Zor Zoria's Vitmak please. And dish out damage. And then let's again keep a close eye on... Um, is there more tangling stuff? No, only this one. So he's definitely my second target. In the meantime, shield setting for 50%. Fitmax armor is going down though. So that should be... And there we go. We got another switch. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Drone management. Actually very important here. Why the hell did you uh, waste that shot? She would probably have gone down at this point. And now I'm below 50. So next up, we've got the tangling. Let's go. Good news on this is my ogres start to get a lot closer in the meantime they're really going after my cap as well but we are still holding at 40 percent and this is uh, i think one of the stronger dps waves that you encounter here so i'm not too worried and i'm, I'm surprised to see that they're not switching yet again um, what i was gonna say is that when they do switch um, it basically lowers the incoming DPS quite a bit and it makes the sites uh, easier to tank, basically. Um, and uh, now, yep, yeah, this is getting decently challenging. We're at 30%. So let's keep going. Let's take care of these Kikimoras first. That one's down. Good. Fire on the next one. I hope I don't have to go into armor. 
That would be bad. And definitely that Raznaborg Damovic next. And yeah, no switching. <laughs> Maybe they smell blood coming, putting my shields at 29%. Maybe they're saying we should keep going. Perhaps we can break his tank. Um, they tend to be a little bit smarter than the average NPC rat. So that one's next, just because of his kinetic incoming damage and then i think we'll hit the starving ones next to try and save a little bit of cap because if i i uh, lose uh resistance as well i could get into trouble and this is where i i do have to make a choice look at all these misses that is pretty bad and again with the full misses maybe i'll switch just to try and and see if it is perhaps more efficient come on bring him home break out the hobgoblins cost me a little bit of time and more cap being drained but all right this should now be far more steady Rasnaborg Damovic and then starving comes first because uh, cap going down next up let's go starving I pressed F please uh, follow my orders but 30% shields which is right around the optimal so this is my fastest regen rate for the shields and uh, there is no way that they can get on top of this, I don't think. They could, if I if I can't use the Adaptive Invulnerability field anymore. But I think once the Starvings are gone, we'll have fully stabilized and we still have plenty of HP. So, there we go, Capacitor is empty. So now Resistances are off. Need to get rid of the other Starving as well. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been learning in these conduits that, you, um, you know, you gotta be a little bit careful uh, with the drone aggro as well. Sometimes they switch a lot. I actually lost several drones at this point, which is also why I switched to the uh, to the Galente drones, because I just have slightly better skills in them. They don't cost too much. Um, so that's just for me uh, an easy go to uh, drone category. And uh, yeah, I've just been slowly losing uh, drones to these sites which is very annoying um, the Praxis is still my favorite despite the fact that the Vindicator is more efficient uh, it runs the sites more quickly this is far more uh, safe basically there, there's almost no way that they're gonna break the tank uh, on this ship it's far more steady in the meantime we slowly slowly gain a little bit of capacitor back uh, but it's absolutely fine the region is just too high they can't do anything against my ship anymore so let's get rid of the final tree and uh, yeah basically I wanted to show you guys that they do switch to drone aggro what I have found is that if you take the time to first launch a couple of missiles on every wave on the first ship that it tends to not be a problem they very rarely switch at this point but if you deploy your drones right away uh, then they will try to um, then they will try to switch and sometimes very aggressively so uh, switching like four or five times in a single wave having to retreat my ogres all right one is in deep uh, deep armor or structure or something like that uh, then switching to mediums just to try and, and keep going um, and then finally also yeah the importance of taking care of the webbers i think if you want to save your drones especially your slower uh, heavy drones uh, then it is very important to try and take out the tangling uh, the tangling targets first that web because they, they'll just get rid of your drones in the 6,000 meters that they have to travel uh, if they're webbed. It's just a real pain in the butt, uh, to be honest, uh, from time to time. But I enjoy this content. There's still more for me to learn. There's probably better ships to use as well than even the Vindicator. Although I would love to have a way for the Vindicator to be more effective on the Vidmac as well, which goes uh, out to 15 kilometers. But uh, here we go, guys. For now, Praxis is still my favorite chip for the conduit. So you can see how effective it is, how safe it is as well. Uh, the tank holding quite nicely. And let's see if we get lucky with the drops. Yeah, 22 million. Uh, ooh, ancillary armor rep uh, muted plasmid. That is pretty damn good. So let's get that in. It's actually around my average loot and salvage uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, 20 million. Uh, I would say on average and uh, very 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 nice content uh, with yeah some tactics to learn some things to keep in mind uh, when it comes to running them safely basically 
give your drones a little bit of time do some some damage yourself uh, before you uh, send your drones out it's going to keep them a little bit safer and then take care of the webs uh, as soon as possible to make sure that if they do switch you give them the best chance of survival anyways that's gonna be it for this video then i don't think we have to compare to uh, another run because there was a surprisingly low amount of aggro on my drones for this one but as i've said what i would normally do allow the wave to come in two volleys of the missiles deploy the drones send them in then and from uh, then on uh, personally i've not experienced any serious aggro on the drones if you use that uh, that tactic so there you go hope that this can help people run these conduits effectively thank you very much for watching and i'll see you all next time